sisters, brothers, siblings in the spirit, grace and peace to you from God. From God, mercy, peace to you. And welcome, be at home in the presence of love. Stronger than death. Welcome. Be at home in the companionship of the risen Christ. The risen Christ, source of gentleness, who abides with us now. Be at home in God and in this time of worship, and lift up your hearts in praise. Amen. Good morning, First Church, and welcome once again on this third Sunday of Easter, in this week of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, First Church. It's wonderful to be back here with you, though we miss you all, but we have this online opportunity in this time of social distancing, and we are grateful. I'm Dan Smith, one of the many ministers here at First Church. And I am Sarah Higginbotham, the Director of Creative Worship and Arts. If you haven't found your Sunday bulletin yet, please go to the tab uh, marked Worship and Live Stream at the top of our webpage and click on the weekly bulletins, bulletins button and call up the one for today, April 26th. We are so glad that you're joining us online. We hope that some of you are returning again to the home altars that we invited you to set up three weeks ago. If you have a candle nearby and something to light it with, Let's do that now. And in, together we invite God into our hearts and our homes. Friends, today once again, Peter Sykes is with us at the organ and piano just out of the screen. We also today welcome Carlisle and Lexi once again, and Karen MacArthur is joining us from Dartmouth, Massachusetts. We're glad you're all with us. Happy Eastertide. Carlisle, Lexi, Karen, are you all with us today? Let's try that again. <laughs> Lexi, Carlisle, Karen, are you all with us today? Yes, we're with you. Beautiful. Yes, happy Easter time, everyone. Great. And hello again from the south coast of Massachusetts. Beautiful. And now let us continue in worship and in song.
Friends, Christ walks by our side, whether on the hard road or the gentle path. He calls us to travel with him, to recognize him in all people, to receive and to share God's grace and courage everywhere, even in our own homes, even with ourselves. In this silence, let us be honest with ourselves and with God. Let us examine our faithfulness to Christ's way. Friends, hear the good news of Easter. In place of our distrust, Christ breathes forth courage. In place of our wariness, compassion. In place of our resignation, resilience. Hear him now saying to your heart, even if the road is long, I am with you. Let us receive this new life with joy and share a sign of Easter peace. You can do this by folding your arms over your chest or holding your hands together or spreading your arms out as a sign of peace for the world. Peace be with you, First Church in Cambridge. And peace be with you, Sarah. Peace. Peter, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Carlisle and Karen and Lexi. Sarah, glad you had a week off last week. Yes, thank you. How are you this week? Very well, yes. It was good to have a Sunday off. Thank you very much. We are continuing to have bits of stops and starts in our rhythm of the week, but we're, we keep trying. Every day is a new day. So, <laughs> sounds about right. Sounds yeah. like what's going on in our household oh, as well. And here, uh, doing okay, though, and um, looking forward to taking a few days off this week, I think. So um, thank you. All right. Let us continue in worship with the time for children. Wonderful to have you back for this, especially. Thank you. So I'd like to invite the children to gather around the live stream. Uh, if they're not in the room, parents, why don't you um, ask them to come and listen in to this part of the worship service. Hi, kids. I miss you. <laughs> I miss seeing you here in this room and in this building every Sunday. I miss greeting you with high fives and with hugs. I miss teaching the Midler class. 
and I miss singing with all the classes in the chapel. I miss making sandwiches with you and sharing an after church lunch with you. In our Thursday Zoom calls, some of you have shared what you are missing. One thing that almost every child on the call mentions is missing school. Even if school hasn't always been your favorite place, it's pretty clear that not going to school has been hard for almost everyone. And now this past week, we learned for certain that we're not going back to school this year. We're going to continue doing school at home until the summer. Maybe we were expecting to hear this, but it's still hard when we heard the governor say it out loud. Some of you are in your last year at your school, so missing the end of the year is even more sad for all the ending activities that won't be the same. Whether it's your last year of elementary school or middle school, high school or college or graduate school, it's really not fair that you don't get to celebrate your accomplishments with your friends and your school community. This is a time of big feelings, sad feelings, angry feelings, nervous feelings, worried feelings. And I'm not just talking about kids and their feelings. There are plenty of grown-ups out there having all these big feelings too. There's a part of the Bible that is full of big feelings. It's the book of Psalms. The Psalms are a collection of poems and songs written to God. There are 150 Psalms and they cover a wide range of emotions. Some of them are quite happy, describing good things that we thank God for. Some of them are very sad, telling God how badly things are going and how terrible we feel. Some are full of fear, asking God, where are you? And telling God how scary the world feels right now. Many psalms beg God to stay close and keep us safe. People have read and sung the psalms for thousands and thousands of years. And over the years, when people have lived through all kinds of things and experienced lots of big feelings, they have turned to the psalms for comfort. Because amidst all the emotions in the psalms, there is a very clear message for us in almost every single one of the 150 Psalms. God is good. God is with us. God doesn't leave us alone. God walks with us through the happy times and sad times and angry times and scared times. Here in the Children's Worship Book Corner, I have several copies of this book. It's called Psalms for Young Children. It takes some of the psalms and puts them into language that helps kids understand them. And it has pictures that add new ways of wondering about every psalm. I can't wait until you come back into the sanctuary and take a look at this book. But maybe your family can find it online for now and share it with you. I'm going to share just a few pieces from it. From Psalm number one. When I listen to you, God, when I do what you ask me to, I am like a tree planted by a river, a tree full of fruit with leaves that are always green. From Psalm 69, when I am sad, it feels like I'm underwater. It feels like I'm stuck in the mud or at the bottom of a dark hole. Pull me from this dark place, God. Save me. I need your help. And from Psalm 136. Thank you, God. You are so good. Your love never ends. Thank you, God, for making the sun. Your love never ends. 
Thank you, God, for the moon and the stars. Your love is forever and ever. And now, all of us together, we will share a psalm that celebrates the amazing goodness of God's creation. But first, let us pray. Living God, you meet us in unexpected places and surprise us with the abundance of your love. Feed us by your word and fill us with your spirit so that we may follow you this day and always. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from Psalm 104. Bless the creator, O my soul. O God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. Wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. When you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the creator endure forever. May God rejoice in these works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles. Who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to my creator as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to you, for I rejoice in you. Bless the creator, O my soul. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We'll now hear two reflections from Lexi and Carlisle. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, First Church. On this Earth Sunday, I would like us, I would like to invite us all into a moment of contemplative meditation concerning creation and our place in it. Wherever you are, come to a comfortable seat with your feet firmly on the floor. Whether you place your feet on the floor of your home or on the ground outside, you are being supported by the earth, our collective home. Once you have grounded yourself in your seat, I invite you to take your hands and form them into a cup on your lap. Now, imagine someone placing your favorite kind of flower, having been scooped right out of the garden into your cupped hands. Perhaps you can still see the soil clinging to its roots. You feel some cold dew fall off the petal. Maybe you've had to to cradle it properly. Stay here for a moment, considering this flower in your hand. It was once a seedling, needing help and nourishment to grow. It has gone through so much strong stormy winds, years when it wasn't sure it would come back for a second bloom, the season of an early frost. You could crunch it up in your hand if you tried, the petals breaking off onto the floor. And yet the systems that keep the flower alive are so intricate 
when we really think about it. It really is a work of genius, a gift that we are called to protect and nurture. Yes, the flower is so fragile and it's also really, really strong. Maybe it has developed a bitter taste to be less appealing to little critters who might have it for a snack. Maybe it turns its face towards the sun for better access to light when it gets dark in the afternoon. Its roots, its roots lace into the soil when it gets dark and it will provide a sure foundation no matter what the weather or circumstance. Look at your flower and take a moment to bless it with new life and the resilience to grow with the help of God. At this time, take a moment to come back to the room and perhaps place your back power at home altar or in your memory to return to throughout the week. I've been especially attentive to all the flowers blooming this time of year. They have been created to be alive and to thrive. They remind us of memories of lazy spring and summer days with loved ones of Easter and of hope of warmer weather as the haze of the winter months melt away. Creation is so fragile and so strong. And as a part of God's creation, so are we. Our bodies are miracles and can and do survive a lot. Our souls withstand even the strongest heartache and grief. But we are mortal. We get hurt and sick Sometimes suddenly, historic pandemics hit, jobs are lost, loved ones are placed in harm's way, homeschooling has brought us up against our life nerve, we can't see friends and family like we used to, and we, just like our flowers, are hit with the realization of our fragility, of our soft petals, of our roots removed from our soil. But there is a still small that knows deeply that God was the whole of creation and that God's spirit still hovers over it all from the beginning. God's presence is there with us in our weakness and in our strength, showing us that we can defy simple categories and be both at the same time. God loved creation into being to be both strong and fragile to be both mortal and experience life everlasting. There's this little cartoon I keep on my phone that I kept on my phone easily accessible to show to patients over the summer interning as a hospital chaplain. It's of this little personified animal with a tear streaming down its face. And the original text reads, quote, I wanted to cry, but I didn't. I was brave instead, end quote. On my copy, someone crossed out the second half of both of the sentences so that the text would read something like this, quote, I wanted to cry, so I did. I was brave and sad, end quote. God, help us to embrace our courage and our grief at the same time, knowing that you have made us so fragile and yet so strong. As the psalmist proclaims, we will sing to you our creator as long as we live. We will sing praise to you for this life while we have being. May our meditations be pleasing to you, the very ground of our being. Amen. Amen. If you all will please join me in a brief reflection as we continue to gaze upon creation and ourselves. Some people rise in the morning and are covered in joy. They rise feeling connected to their divine purpose. Their steps have meaning despite not knowing where they are walking to. Others rise in clouds of confusion or enveloped in what the book of Ecclesiastes calls heaven, which is the fading breath or futility of life. 
It is the idea that amidst the chaos, life's meaning is never clear. They may be discouraged by the injustice or tired of being beat down by society or life circumstances. They may feel their steps are sporadic and unguided, and they may be unsure of God's purpose for their lives and how God is playing a role in their current condition. But the truth is to be human is to constantly hold these two realities in tension. And we will undoubtedly experience both of these frames of mind because that's just life. But we are not called to pass judgment on where we are, but to know that wherever we are, it is okay because we are held and understood. Because God who gave us all of these things knows the complexity of life. But that same God is as much with us in the light of our joy as in the shadow of our pain. Maybe it's a pandemic, a flood, or a crisis of another kind, but by fixing our eyes upon God, those shadows will never overcome the light because we are children of light. Psalm 104 says, you have made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows it's time for setting. You make darkness and it's night when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. It also says you are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent and you cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants and bread to strengthen the human heart. The same God, our God, is present with us through it all. Now, I wouldn't be surprised that in the wake of this crisis, some of us experience both of these states of mind in the same day all under the same sun. It's also easier now to appreciate the joy in the little things, the wave of a stranger on the street, the warm comfort of the sun on our skin after days inside, and the opportunity to connect more deeply with loved ones. But it's also easier to fall into the grips of despair and uncertainty, which may also seem amplified. Some of us are grieving the loss of loved ones in isolation, for there is a looming fear of the economic hardships that have arrived or are on their way. We can all relate to the feeling of time blurring together as we move through our days to look up and say, what day of the week is it? How long have I been inside? In the past, some of us have crafted our identity around what we were working towards or our next goal that gives us our meaning. Because waking up and knowing what we are working towards gives some order to our day, does it not? But now with the world on pause, while we are suspended between two poles and frozen in place, the length of that pause can be daunting because in it, we are cut off from who we were before. Was it your job? You may have been a workaholic, a heroic community servant, a student, a CEO, a business person, an engineer, a boss, a friend, a provider. But beyond the tasks and things of this world, who are you? Who do you love? What makes you feel connected to God? What gives you purpose in times of stillness? And if we do not know now, we must search for it. In this pause, God is calling us to look up from our tasks and to gaze at creation, not just to craft a new self, but to reclaim who we have always been, but may not have known it. The resurrected Christ was not a new person per se, but the final union of the person of Jesus with the spirit of who he was always destined to become. And nature, as we see in our song for today, is constantly going through a process of hibernation rebirth, shedding, receding, and growing. And nature also possesses a delicate balance of light and darkness and rediscovering new ways to remain in balance with itself. And in this post-resurrection season, God calls us to gaze upon the rhythms of creation and the earth to do the same within ourselves. Beloved, I invite you this week with each day and step to gaze at creation and deepen to yourself, to remember what it was that brings you your peace, your purpose, and your balance. 
and let us enter a new frame of mind where we can reclaim that. Or if we cannot, let us create something new in this season of blossom and new life. Amen. Amen. Good morning once again, First Church, and welcome. We're so glad you're here worshiping with us today. You'll see in your bulletin there are a few new opportunities for gathering via Zoom, for some formation, for fellowship. Uh, you'll also find a few new ways to help in the wider community. So please take a look at all of those announcements in your bulletin. And please stick around after this worship service. We will be having a congregational meeting via Zoom and our live stream. This is an experiment. Uh, not in all of the 300, almost 400 years of this church have we ever done a congregational meeting like this. So bear with us. We will have our leaders uh, live streaming to you. You'll hear their audio and you will be connected as members and friends to a Zoom call where you can vote and ask any questions via the chat function. We'll explain more at the end of our worship, um, but we do hope you'll join us. We will be um, taking a vote about our boilers, uh, paying for new boilers here in the building, um, and hearing a little bit about our staffing plan moving forward. So stick around for that. Also at 2 p.m., after the well after the congregational meeting, um, there will be the final conversation of the cross and the lynching tree discussion um, of that book by James Cone. So if you've been part of that, please zoom in at 2 o'clock for the final conversation. Also, we just want to let you know that we, um, the building remains closed. We remain online for all of our connections, and we're awaiting guidance from our local and state officials about reopening our building and, and going back to any face-to-face -face communication. But um, we will keep you up to date on that uh, as we know it. It'll be on our website and also in our e-newsletter first glance that we will send out to you when we have more information about what the future holds. Thank you, Sarah. I have a few pastoral concerns to share uh, this morning. 
first longtime member and one-time First Church Minister of Christian Education, Cynthia Shoemaker, has tested positive for COVID-19. She's living at the Courtyard Nursing Care Center in Medford, uh, where many other cases have been reported. There is some good news. Cynthia so far has no symptoms, but let's please keep her and, um, and everyone at the Courtyard Nursing Center uh, in our prayers and everyone in nursing homes everywhere. Um, and please feel free to send Cynthia a card as well. I think she'd like that. I spoke to her this week and she was sounding pretty good, but um, any encouragement would be lovely. Also, a bit more good news, after a scare last week, Don Johnson's mother, Jan, has improved and was discharged uh, from Mass General and is doing well, and Kate uh, and Don are still quarantining symptom-free. Um, let's hope that lasts. And finally, some sad news, Hillary uh, Hopkins' beloved nephew, Jeff died this week of lung cancer at age 56. Let's hold up Hillary and, um, and her family and Jeff's family in our prayers in this time of grief and mourning. And one more that just came through this morning. Uh, Jennifer and Claire are a couple who join us many Sundays, um, a part of our community. And Jennifer's mother, Sharon Marshall, is dying in hospice in California, and they are not able to visit. We understand that heartbreak, um, and Claire and Jennifer, um, you are in our prayers. Uh, your mother, Sharon, is in our prayers. Thank you all. Okay, we are now going to switch gears. Uh, and turn to some exciting news. When the time comes for you to come back to First Church, you most likely won't notice a significant change here at First Church, unless you go up to the roof of Margaret Jewett Hall, as I did this very morning, to behold a wonderful sight. For several years, we have wanted to install solar panels, and now we finally have Heartfelt thanks to Susan Redlick and our Earth Stewardship team for raising this with us before our capital campaign, before we had to do some other work on the roof. Also, special thanks to Lori Birch for bringing us a careful reading of the contracts and securing pro bono legal services uh, that we were drawing up. Gratitude as well to our wonderful treasurer, Jason Whaley. And finally, deep thanks to our chair of buildings and grounds, Nate Jones, and to our facilities manager, Chris McQuage Lucas, for seeking bids and working directly with the contractor 621 Energy, who very recently completed the install. Thanks to all that good work, and by the grace of God, 89 solar panels have recently been installed on the roof of our parish house. This shift to renewable energy will allow us to be better stewards of God's creation, and we wanted to wait until Earth Day to celebrate this. It also allows us to join a growing number of houses of worship and other so-called energy hogs in witnessing for the need for us all to shift to renewable energy. And finally, in addition to energy savings, it also means cost savings to the tune of about $115,000 over the 25-year life of the contract. This is good news. So with no further ado, let us bless our solar panels. I think on the call later, the Zoom call, we may have the technology to be able to share a photo that I took this morning that's further incentive for you to join that congregational meeting. Uh, but for now, we invite you to imagine 89 beautiful solar panels on our roof and put your hands of blessing up wherever you are. You might even try to face them towards the church, not the TV, in the general direction of the church, if you know where you are and where that is. And let us pray. Hear these words from Scripture, from Psalm 36. O source of light, by your light we see light. And from Genesis, God made the two great lights, and God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and God saw that it was good. And from Isaiah, arise, shine, for your light has dawned. The presence of the eternal will shine upon you. Creator God, we give you thanks as we bless this solar power array. Today we celebrate the sun you have made as the source of light and warmth and energy. 
May we have the wisdom to appreciate the goodness in your creation. May we experience your ever-renewing bounty with awe and gratitude, and may we use it wisely. God, help us to discern all the more how we are connected with all living creatures under the sun, all dependent on the sun for life. May this simple act of harnessing your light enable us and others to be ever better stewards of your creation, even as we grow increasingly aware of the irreversible harm we have caused. We pray, God, though we are beset by a crisis of a global pandemic, redouble our efforts to address the ongoing climate crisis. Teach us to sense the risen Christ as a presence that brings hope with the dawn. Redouble our strength, redouble our hope, continue to be our light and guide our paths to still more renewable energy and a more sustainable future for this generation and all the generations to come. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now let us center our hearts and minds to be in a spirit of prayer with one another. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Creator of mountain grandeur and meteor showers, you are ever at work in the infinite space of the universe and in the smallness of each ant, beetle, butterfly, and bee. We marvel at your majesty, yet are awestruck at the intricate simplicity of life. Dew glistening on spider's web, bird song jubilant, each new day, a miracle dawning. On this Earth Day Sunday, we give you thanks for trees and clear skies. We rest in their shade, breathe in their oxygen, feast on their fruit. Trees anchor the ground beneath our feet and purify the air around us. Their cycles are a silent, faithful witness to your goodness and providence. We give you thanks for all life on earth, nourished by your hand. Let your, your presence, presence be known, be known among, among us today, us today as, as we, we recognize, recognize the gifts of creation, creation all around us. us. Bless them bless with growth, growth and, and bless us, us with wisdom to steward our environment into, into a new life, life where, where all, all may flourish. flourish. We, we pray this, this in the name, name of Jesus Christ, Christ our, our true vine. And we and now, we now pray, pray the words, the words he taught that us he taught us to say. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, we as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning again from South Dartmouth. We've learned a lot these past six weeks about this virus, about ourselves, about public health. And one thing that we've learned is that if you wear a face mask, you're slightly less likely to catch coronavirus. While at the same time, if you wear a face mask, you're many times more likely, many times less likely to spread it to others. 
In our church, our weekly offering is the same. We give not because it's how we gain something for ourselves. We give because we're supporting something for others. We're supporting this church for today, during this pandemic, and for years and years to come. So as we worship together, we invite you to give. You may give online from your bank account at firstchurchcambridge.org by clicking Give at the top right of the page. Or you can give by debit or credit card by texting the dollar sign in the amount to 844-996-0982. Both links are listed on our webpage in the bulletin. Our morning offering will now be given and received. God, we give you thanks for this day, for the gift of the earth, and for the gift of our responsibility to care for it and for each other. Guide us to use these gifts for the common good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
God who is the source of beauty on this earth, the source of all creation, bless you and keep you now and always. If you must go forth to love and to serve, go forth to do that because you are the church. But if you can stay home to love and to serve, Stay home because you are the church. Stay home to care for yourselves and the world. Stay home in peace. Stay home in love. And if you do not have a safe place to stay at home, may you and we all know that God is our home in whom we dwell in safety always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.